Hey everyone, I wanted to go live today and talk about um, a important topic about bathing and tip, bathing tips and techniques uh, when your loved one has dementia and if you're the caretaker out there. You know, I know getting and and getting and an, and during th during the times of aging or you know, your loved one you know needs a bath is a, is a notorious battle that many family members and caregivers usually typically experience. <laughs> and so if you haven't, you know, this is something that you might come across over time when your parents are, are aging. You know, when dementia is a part of, of this equation, you know, it complicates things even further. You know, um, there are many number of reasons why our parents with Alzheimer's or dementia or any other form of type of, you know, cognitive condition, you know, become resistant to take a shower you know, as the disease starts to get progressively worse, you know, understanding the underlying causes can help us and you and everyone better navigate these type of issues and help their loved ones stay as clean, healthy, and comfortable as possible. So, you know, how often should your parents bath, have take a bath, right? Because this is such a difficult task. One important consideration is, is how often um, is your parents truly, do they truly need, need a bath? You know, since the U S is a melting pot of people and cultures for around the world, there are many different types of definitions of what constitutes cleansiness, right? So, you know, um, you know, you know, where I live, if you live in, you know, in the high plains where many seniors who are now, you know, typically in, in their eighties and nineties, they grew up uh, with, uh, taking weekly baths often because, you know, they lived out in a more of a remote type of, you know, area, like, you know, they lived in the farms and, and water was too precious to waste. If you take it in that, and it, this is just an example, take it into consideration for others, that routine was just n a normal behavior, right? So all of this is to say that if your parent won't take a shower every single day, it is unlikely that their their health will suffer. Okay, so this may seem inadequate to younger generations who are used to showering more frequently, but a change of clothes each day or so, and and a weekly bath is usually enough for most of of elders or, or people in the aging you know in the aging population who typically aren't. Um, exerting themselves or usually getting dirty on a regular basis. However, if skin issues or this type of incontinence uh, um, are part of this type of equation of their their daily routine, you know, then more frequent bathing is going to be considered crucial for preventing any type of dangerous infections. Um, the the priority is you know to find a frequency that is realistic for both you or your loved one and that will help them maintain their well-being is the goal. You know, if you need some assistance with determining how often your parents should bath, don't hesitate, you know, one is to contact your primary care physician for advice. You know, contact a home care company, contact a senior center, contact professionals. He, you know, should, should be able to provide more of a ballpark answer to discuss the type of risks with them, if any, of not maintaining personal hygiene and suggest some type of alternatives to full, uh, to have full showers or baths. You know, home care companies are great. You know, this is what they do. This is what they're trained for. You know, memory loss and confusion and there's fear. You know, and all of this is combined, you know, determining a, a, a bathing schedule is probably the, the easiest part of trying to overcome your parents' reluctance to, to get in the shower or get them in the tub. See, symptoms of dementia can seriously derail your parents, you know, pre pre uh, previously well-established personal care routine and make it impossible for you to, to assist them. You know, memory loss can lead to your parents to believe that they have they have just showered when in reality they have not bathed in weeks. They haven't taken a bath in a week, you know, or they become confused when they begin the multi-step process that you're going to be putting them through to take a bath. 
identifying all the different type of products in the bathroom and their their, sp their specific uses, you know, and telling them all the things that you're going to do can be completely overwhelming. Rather than informing someone, they trust that they are confused and and need assistance. So, you know, and they just avoid taking a bath altogether. You know, even more common in seniors with dementia is a fear of bathing. They often become afraid, all right, of the shower or the bath because they feel unsteady on the slick surfaces, you know, or are worried about falling, you know, and getting hurt. It's a fear that they have. You know, they they may they may feel uncomfortable in the cold bathroom and become you know, agitated and by the sen uh, sensation of the water hitting their skin. Now, later stages of the disease as it progresses with dementia, you know, uh, our parents, you know, or our seniors, you know, may not understand the tasks at hand at all. So think about how frightening it really can be, <laughs> you know, to have water pounding and pouring down on you on your head when you can't even figure out what, you know, what's happening and why it's happening, you know, it's frightening, you know, confusion and discomfort happening at the same time um, and lack of understanding are bound to lead to a situation where you are, what you're dealing with is that they have fear and resistance. Now, you know, how to help someone now who has dementia when they're bathing, you know, it could be very challenging trying to figure out what is going on. Um, in a loved one's head, you know, especially when they're suffering from dementia. Each patient and every person, every family member can never, you can't compare. Everyone's going to be different and it may take some time in a trial and error to determine why they don't want to take a bath. And what you can do is try to help to encourage and comfort them during this process. You know, the following insight um, the following insights address, you know, different type of common issues that dementia ca caregivers experience at some point in their journey. You know, um, one or there could be a combination of these tips and tricks maybe possibly can help you at the, the trying to accomplish the task at hand is to have a bath and to have them have a daily routine of better hygiene. Now, there's one tip that I can offer you is offer an incentive. You know, if you feel that the reason is, you know, your parent isn't bathing is because of that they they've already done it. If you know, or they just don't see the importance of it, trying, you know, try to as associating the process with something that they enjoy. Okay, and then give them a fun type of incentive um, to to cooperate. For example, this is just one example. You could say, let's both get cleaned up and we'll go to your favorite restaurant for lunch, taking the focus away and putting it into the outcome that they possibly be motivated to go out to go out to eat to their favorite place. That's just one tip. Another one is, you know, prioritizing the safety and the comfort. Make sure that you they, they feel comfortable in the bathroom throughout this type of process. If the room tends to be cool or tr try to warm it up before the bath, uh, you know, and turning on the central heat for a short period of time or using a, a small p a space heater can make a huge difference in the temperature of the whole room, especially because they get, you know, our, you know when you're a senior, you get cold more easily. You know, so if a shower is the best uh, route to go for your loved one, be sure to install and make sure it's a, it's a safe environment. Install grab bars for them to, so that's extra stable when they're getting in and out of the, you know, the, the tub or the shower. A comfortable shower chair is advisable always when I go out and do assessments for family members. This is, this is, this is what I recommend. A handheld shower head. It is, 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 an, is necessary. The shower head keeps the water from continually uh, coming down on the person's head and allows the caregiver to carefully direct in the specific areas where the stream goes and, minim and it help minimize the main thing is that the discomfort and the fear that they're feeling. And another tip I can give is, is, is consider sponge baths too. So, you know, as 
are you know if you you're, you're dealing with dementia and it's at advanced stage and they're adamant about avoiding the bathroom you may want to try um different type of tactics like uh you know bathing doesn't have to entail a full bath or going into the shower you know when done done correctly and professionally a person can get get clean with a sponge bath you know and they can have you can, you could shampoo their hair and uh and no no rinse personal with uh, and no rinse type of personal care products whatsoever. And you can do this very successfully, you know, especially with dementia, you know, a sometimes plan B or plan C, you know, may <laughs> plan B or C must become plan A sometimes, you know, and, you know, you just try, you try different things and, 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 and sometimes it works. You can't compare yourself to others either. But sometimes it works, you know. Now another, you know, thing to be is really important is communicate with helping with, you know, your parents. You know, whether you are assisting them to shower or you're giving them a sponge bath, it's important to announce each step before you do it. Explain to them before you do it. You know, the you know your parents may not understand exactly what you are saying, but it will help keep them a little bit more focused, a little bit more calm. Of what's ahead of them during this type of process? You know, um, surprises can lead to behaviors like agitation and anger and confusion. You know, describe um, describe your every move in a low, calm, soothing voice and see what happens. Try it out. Try to be calm. You know, for example, you could say, I'm going to wipe your face with this warm cloth. Okay. Or you could say, I'm going to lift your arm and wash you. You know, I will keep you warm and I'm going to make sure that you're comfortable under uh, com and com comfortable under the blanket. That's if you're doing sponge bathing, you know, many elderly people, you have to understand, you know, you know, they, they can, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, and it's hard for you as, as a child to, to see this and go through this. But, you know, I found that hiring a professional caregiver from a home care company to come bathe, you know, your parents can work out very the work out very well, you know. But you doing it, you're you're having their son and daughter do it. You know, it's not as desirable for your parents. You know, the aide who arrived for the bathe visits, you know, may will be wearing scrubs and looks like then maybe possibly your parents who have dementia may recognize them as coming from a hospital or a professional setting, which you know will made the you know, makes them feel a little bit more comfortable during that time. You know, there's a lot of benefits of hiring and having a professional caregiver um, that is well-trained and uh, both aides from a reputable company that are experienced at this um, are able to do a more thorough job probably than you, you know, more than they could do it quicker and follow all the safety protocols involved with it too. Regardless of, of, of who is assisting them, you know, your parents are often a little bit more comfortable with the arrangement, okay, both mentally and physically prepared, you know, if they can somehow remain covered during the process, you know, and not exposing them. You know, it's the uh, worst thing you could ever do is it's just tear off their clothes and wear on their bed laying naked. You always should always lay a blanket over them or something, a towel over them. Leaving, leaving them exposed is probably the worst type of experience you could ever do for your parents during that time. Maybe keeping a robe, you know, or a towel, like I said, towel draped over their private areas or all the areas of the covered areas that you're not going to be washing or sponge bathing or anything like that. You know, this helps them stay warm as well too and feel a little bit less exposed, you know, and, um, you know, a full bath or a shower isn't needed every single day as well too, but there are certain areas of the body that warrant more of a frequent type of attention. And that's something that you have to be able to be on point with, especially during the times of the day and night, if they were going to be incontinent. A few quick you know, passes with an adult-sized uh, wet wipe under the arms each day 
can't help. Couldn't help. You know, the buying wipes and having them and cleaning in all the areas, especially under the armpits, so that there's no type of odor or smell. That really helps. You know, and cleaning the private areas, especially after a bowel movement, and uh, cleaning. You know, the the backside and the front side of them, and and right away, not waiting, can can help limit smells as well too. You know, depression sometimes sets into place during this time that you are dealing with your mom and dad who have dementia and trying to figure out how to shower them. Dem uh, you know, depression can affect personal hygiene for your parents too as well. They're, they're, you can be depressed and they can be depressed. You know, this is an issue that contributes to a decline in bathing, you know, and grooming and all type of habits. Depression does that in any in type of situation. Sometimes people just start to lose their hygiene and the things that they, they are normally, their daily routine that are normal to do. You know, uh, you know, cha uh, uh, depression can alone can cause these changes, but this is this is sometimes a mental health condition is also a common occurrence alongside with many forms of dementia as well too. So if your loved one does experience, you know, uncharacteristic type of changes in bathing or grooming habits, it's it's wise to seek you know, an appointment with their physician and maybe possibly you can adjust their meds to help them with their with their depression too. You know, you know, remember that a daily bath isn't always necessary. Okay. And then also remember that if you're tiring yourself out trying to get your parents to stick to their old personal hygiene routines, it's important to take a step back and assess your motives and your approach. Okay. Are you trying to get your loved one to adhere to your own standards of cleansiness? Might not happen. Are you afraid of what others may think if your loved one is, isn't always clean, fresh, and well-dressed? Or is all this fuss that you're going through warranted because it's the best of their own health and comfort? Could be, right? But cleansiness is important. It's important for good health, and it's important to not, not to give up too as well too. So I hope this uh, this resonated with you. If it did, if you have any questions or any concerns, or you would uh, would love for you to share this video for anybody who else who needs help in who has their parents or loved one going through dementia. And um, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please leave them on below. And if you have uh, also you need to reach out to me, feel free to reach out to me. My um, I'm always available. You can call me up, call me up in my office. You can reach me on social media, whatever it is that we can do to help you. Glad to help. Hope all is well. Take care, everyone. Have a great day.